African folk culture is the extent to which the African connection has been preserved, as is evident in the African nation dance, popularly known as the Big Drum Dance. The drums are called big drums because when that tide of humanity moved across the Atlantic in the 17th century, when the Caribbean became home to the transplanted race, the Africans were found to have the biggest drums in existence at that Today time. To your viewers, in the last interview with Mr. Joseph, um, we spoke about carnival because, of course, we are in the carnival season in Caracu. We are back again with Mr. Leo Joseph, the mayor, <laughs> the cultural ambassador of Caracu. He has been making several contributions and continue to make at home and abroad in the U.S. Mr. So Joseph, I think that you did justice to that carnival interview. Everyone has been contacting us to say you give some great information. You think you covered everything? I know you cannot cover anything, but did you leave out anything? One of the things I would have liked to mention, and, and I, I, I regret that I didn't, mm -hmm. is the contribution of the mighty scraper. Ah. Okay. Yeah, Scraper, um, <laughs> Scraper was one of the premier Californians back in the day. Oh, really? Of course. And um, if you want to know, he became famous with his first song, Girl, Your Time Is Past. Girl, Your Time Is Past? Past, yes. Already passed. Uh -huh. From the time you reached 22, you're abandoned in Carico. So, in other words, you know, if be 22 and nobody can offer you a win or something, something wrong. That, that was Creeper's first song. And the second one remember is... remember what year was that? That was would be... A, a, uh, let me see. Yeah, it's got to be about 1966. Mm -hmm. that okay. And then he followed up with something called England, I want to go. I can stay here no more. I can stay here no more. Send me voucher. Give me passport. Tell me what to do. I can yes. stay longer in Karaku. That's the mighty scraper. <laughs> okay. That's the mighty scraper. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh -huh. And you know something? <laughs> Just a little dovetail to that is that the mighty scraper and Baba Gabriel, Pastor Lake Baba Gabriel, and Russell Alexis, those are the three local entrepreneurs that we never realized because those guys took an opportunity. Mm -hmm. They were selling limes and singing on yachts and so on and so forth. And when people has good business acumen, they never turn back, you know. Mm -hmm. So my good friend Raj said me, I hope you're observing. Mm -hmm. I said, what? He said, those three guys that understood how to turn a dollar into two mm -hmm. are all millionaires now. Ah, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So, so yes, that, yes. that's a compliment to Scriver. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Listen, I've been, I've been looking at the comments on the video that we posted as well. I didn't know you had bands in America. <laughs> <laughs> More than one. More than one. Oh, yes, we... Not only we had bands, you know, mm. we had um, carnival bands and still bands too. Ah. Yeah, because I, I don't know if I mentioned it to you that when America celebrated its bicentennial, which was in 1976, I remember uh, 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 the American the independence in 1776. So 1976 would have registered 200 years for them. And so when they were celebrating the bicentennial, the band, the steel band that represented the Caribbean community in, in New York was Caracu Carib Orchestra, our steel band. <laughs> oh, nice. Under the leadership of Carol. Joseph, of course, oh. yeah. Uh, then, back then, we were still on the Gary, and the ambassador then was the late Francis Redhead, okay. was representing Gary, and he negotiated the whole thing and got us to go and play on, on Broadway, together with Carlos Lezama. I don't know what's happening to Carlos Lezama now, but he was the chairperson of the Western and American the Association in New York. Labor Day, Eastern Parkway. Mm -hmm. They're the ones running there. And he selected the Caraco Band. Not that we were the best steel band in, in New York, but he said that we were the most disciplined band. Uh -huh. And for that reason, <laughs> he didn't want to be let down when to go and represent the Caribbean uh -huh. in New York. So we went. <laughs> How was the experience? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> 
that <laughs> if you want to know about that experience, let me tell you what. When we performed in Manhattan, mm. you never know again who is listening. Mm -hmm. And about a week or so after the performance, St. Francis read it. He called me and he said, Leo, I said, yes, Mr. Reddit, I have a good job for you all. Wow. I said, what, what, is it, what do you want us to know, Mr. Reddit? He said, I, do, I don't want to call the gentleman's name, but this gentleman wants, he heard the band, mm -hmm. and he tried to find out where the band was from, and somebody told him it's a Grenadian band. Mm -hmm. But he wanted this band, as part of that whole month of celebration, to come and play in his suite in Manhattan, and then I said, oh, yeah? <laughs> he said, yes. I said, and he tell me, you know who he is? He said, no. He tell me, he is responsible. He's a senior person for INS, Immigration and Nat Naturalization Services from Maine to Miami. What? The whole of the Eastern Seaboard. Once he tell me he's an immigration official. Mm -hmm. But so the gentleman wants to know how much you're charging and so I said, so no time is free. Yeah, something like that. Because uh, you don't know how far that relationship will take you. I'll tell you how far it takes us. Uh -huh. So okay, we decided we go to play for free. We went up there. <laughs> and again, I always like to tell the joke. Because about seven of us went. Do you remember some of the names? Yeah. Celestine, Michael, Clifton Sandy. And, and and not Moso because Moso wasn't there yet. Um, Aaron went to play. Okay. When we got down to the elevator, here yeah, Clifton, you miss a Leo, you'll we'll take some serious chance, you know. <laughs> you're going to play for immigration and you have fellas here when you're straight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's to make a there, big yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you know, you can't come back and say, say, <laughs> so now nah, but we went up there and but we gave it our very best right but we played as we never played before nice and the gentleman taking his drink or two uh -huh. and i'm mean, engaging him in a conversation about telling me how good the band is sounding and I tell him, yeah, but the band could actually sound a little better, you know, but we have some guys, some members at home who are trying to get to New York. Ah, he, said, well, them, huh? <laughs> he said, well, okay. okay, no problem, here's my card. Mm -hmm. Call me, you know, don't forget, call me. I said, all right. So I went home and I gave him a couple of days mm -hmm. and I called him. He told me, send him the names. That is how YTT got to America. Just like that? 16 people. What? <laughs> I know that story. <laughs> because you didn't charge. Yes, well, yes. So on. A good well, deal. Exactly. <laughs> other. Not everything is But I don't know, here. you know, in retrospect, wow. I don't know what <laughs> came over me <gasps> to think on, on, on my feet. Yes. Because yes, once I hear yes. this man, this big job, this man have Mr. Immigration. Yes, yes. He's going to play for free. Free. Yes, yes, yes. So we went up there and as a result, we got that letter from this gentleman. Mm -hmm. Sent to the Barbados Embassy. Laurie Cummins, take it up there, 16 visas, no questions asked. Jesus, love of God. <laughs> so you see, I tell you what, <laughs> Caraco community, I've been embedded there for too long and for a long, long time. It's what we in the for Caraco. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, we'll say, if you had social media back then. Eh? You know, yeah. <laughs> it would have, have been something else. Nice. So yeah, and why did you came up? And the sad fact of the matter is, well, Bicentennial was 4th of July, mm -hmm. 1976. YTT landed in New York on the 24th of August, 1976. Okay. Okay. And to coincide uh -huh. with Poco's wedding. Same year? Yeah, same, same day. Oh. So, <laughs> and Poco was... White it is original basement. Ah. So what I did, uh, I just rented some equipment mm -hmm. and I put them in the in the in the uh, the catering hall. Uh -huh. And so we went on the airport, 
pick the guys up and brought them straight to the reception hall. The suitcases were still in the vans. And the time, boys. Music. 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 Abba Juba. Oh, my Tom God. I mean, I, I could imagine that experience. Wow, what? Oh, my God. Because those, wow. in those days, white it was kicking you. Yes. And you know, people will say they're going to come to carry who? Oh. Right. But see, white it in America was no other reason. But I then, mean, <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> I made a big blunder then. The fact that white it was now in New York and we getting around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a guy called Bona James Bode. Mm -hmm. Bode tell me about Leo, oh, 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 I, want, I want you to see the band next week. And he's thinking, I think, well, leave me alone. Do you, you can have the band. Bode place never had more people inside him. So, you know, if you're having a band of visitors, you know, the mm -hmm. first fest supposed to be yours. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. But I mean, yes. there were subsequent fests and so on, we did well. Uh -huh. But the uh -huh. first fed was born at James Fed, yeah, uh -huh. in Brooklyn, on New York and Clarkson. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that was that. That was that. But I think we come here talk about big job, didn't we? <laughs> I don't even know how to start a big job. I am so enjoying this. <laughs> right, so on our last interview, we made mention of the next interview. Mm -hmm. We'll be speaking to Mr. Joseph about big job and his involvement in big job. Mm -hmm. well, only when we traveled to America, that's when I learned that you're a big job man as well. I mean, I know about boat building. <laughs> I know about regatta, mm -hmm. I know about um, quadrille, mm -hmm. and I didn't know much about carnival. And then I learned and saw documentaries with you as a lead person in Big Job in New York. I mean, mm -hmm. Big Job is something that is authentic, authentic to us here in Carico mm -hmm. and in the Caribbean as well, because many of our, our parents came from Africa, walked on the plantations here, they were given one day to celebrate and while celebrating when they dance they saw the similarities in the dancing and that's how they were able to connect which tribe in africa they were from mm -hmm. so we have to we have to keep this tradition here alive in Kariku, and it's something that everyone travel here to see mm -hmm. and i am happy to know that you are involved in big jump as well tell me how it started probably at what age did it start in Kariku and how you got involved in it? What well, the experience with big drum. My aunt Geneva Joseph would have a big drum every year. The same is true for Rose Mackenzie in Montreal. Those are the folks having a big drum dance every year. And what we were responsible to do is to go to Sugar Adam's house and carry the drums during the day. Because those guys are the stars, they're not carrying no big drums. <laughs> so they send you with three shillings. <laughs> that's the deposit. That's, that's the payment. That's, that's what they paid them back then. Plenty money. Plenty money. You give them three shillings and you carry the drums and they get a, a stomach warning. Be careful. Don't throw the drum down. Don't bust the skin and so on. And you have to walk from Belgium south to Marshapel. They carry the drums for the drummers when they come. And remember, I mean, the respect that was meted out to the drummers was second to none. You have to carry the drums, and when they get there, before anything is done, you, drummers food first. Drummers food first. Is that the expression? Yeah, yeah. 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 drummers food first. Yeah. So that, those are the stars that they deny. So, and we'd go to Big Jam, and you just, you're curious, you hear things, but we were never understanding what was happening. We were just, you're going to Big Jam is a line. Mm -hmm. But in 1965, 1965, Queen Elizabeth was visiting Grenada, mm. and the lady, uh, Miss Rowley, was a social officer back then, mm -hmm. and they were scouting here in Caracol looking for talent mm -hmm. to entertain the Queen. They came up here looking for big drum and quadrillon and so on and so forth. So. They decided to take down the Caracol Big Drum Group. I mean, the creme de la creme, the stars, the Colilendos, the, the May Fortunes, and the um, 
George, Alston George, mm -hmm. Phil and all these guys mm -hmm. to go and entertain the Queen. And incidentally, well, Dixie mm -hmm. Stars still mm -hmm. orchestra also accompanied. Mm -hmm. So the so Dixie Stars went down to to entertain. And it just by then I was at a presentation college back in Grenada and a little more mature. And you, you sort of taking a, a, more, a more serious approach to the big jam and what it all represented, you know. So we started following the guys wherever big jam was. We didn't just go there for for a lime. We go to listen to the drumming, listen to the songs and so on and so forth. So uh, somebody I could make a reference to Roger Gay. Roger Gay and the Dennis Gay, uh -huh. his older brother. I mean, we were just hooked on big drums. We were compared to different players and so on and so forth. So that is to say, we left Calico and went to America. There we started where we had this Calico Carib organization. Okay. We had um, the mass band, the steel band. So, so it was quite natural to incorporate big drums. So in 1973, <laughs> in 1973, um, we organized this big drum group and wanted to have a show featuring big drum and the cultures of Caribbean. If you will. So we did. The, the, the big problem though, we didn't have enough of us who understood well enough how to play the drums and for the different figures. So we had to ask Martin Lambert, the late Martin Lambert. He was an educator, mm -hmm. but he is the son of one of the Lambert brothers. I'm not sure if it's Carney or Haynes or Titus, but I think he's the son of one of them. So he grew up in big drum and the drumming and so on and so forth. So we actually had to call him from Colorado to mm -hmm. come to Brooklyn to play the court drum for us. So we performed at there at, at St. Matthew's Hall in Brooklyn. And the turnout man was mm. tremendous. Mm. So, <laughs> the following day in the Caribbean newspaper, the whole thing about that big jump dance and the big jump show was featured in, in the Caribbean Star. Nice. And so then I got a call from this gentleman, Donald Hill. And Donald Hill was calling to tell me that he was so pleased about that and he was in Caribou doing his thesis, he was an anthropologist, and he was asking me, um, sort of testing me Karaoke on this. You know Kenneth Kalis? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I do. Do you know Dennis Jesperson? Oh, you're right inside my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <still Yes>. having... <laughs> <laughs> so then we, we, we got together. And because that show was such a, such a big success, we decided, well, that is going to be a staple. Right. Every time there is a show, there's big demands so on and so of forth. Course. So I could remember the second time when we were going to play big drum. Mm. This time we, we were performing at a place called Bell Rose Ballroom, Bedford and Dean and Dean. And um, mm. the late Rumal Noel, we call him Momoy. Rumal Noel said to me, all you them young people, don't know what are they doing when people beat in drum mm -hmm. you have to kill the sin you have to have blood mm -hmm. to accompany the big drum because there are certain things that the spirits require yes, yes. yeah so i tell mama leave alone come out and deal with your foolishness about <laughs> bleeding this okay. or having blood in the mm -hmm. place but <laughs> before the performance ever get going there was an altercation with two people and my good friend Tintin, Tintin tin rests her head on somebody for you put a guy and for it opening to blood all over the place. You mama, see, you see, I tell you all, when all they're going to yes, play big drum, yes. you have to have blood. It's traditional. <laughs> yes. So we, we always talk about that. Even yes. when there is death, we talk about that. Yeah. And um, well, we said, I don't know, play big drum, big drum was a staple in the yard. Mm -hmm. And um, we moved from, back then, mm -hmm. the central spot. The cultural center for Carol Kwan's in Brooklyn was 72 Lincoln Place. Uh, Lincoln and between Rogers and Lushman. Owned by a Mr. Pierre 
wonderful person. He was from St. Lucia, but you don't know. And he, there was a little bit of intermarriage between himself and his sister and the Charles people up here from okay. Top Hill. Okay. Yeah, down, yeah. He, incidentally, um, he died just this last year. Uh -huh. But the, the, the man was the nicest person you want to know. We were allowed to use his basement for whatever we do. Whatever we do. Nice. So, <laughs> so, Big Drum continued. And then, <laughs> I remember we were playing basically in the karaoke community. We never ventured outside the karaoke community because of that. Mm -hmm. Until in 76, Winston Fleury joined us. Okay. Actually, <laughs> it was the biggest surprise for me because I didn't see Winston in a big drum vein. Winston was this Mr. Conservative. Back in the day when we were going to school together in Grenada. Well spoken. Yeah, well spoken, man. Gift a gab. <laughs> and I remember when we would have debates, be it Caracol Students Club, debating St. Andrew's Parish or St. This Parish. Once we have Fleury on a debating team, they lose. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it was that good. Yes, and he was I mean, a staunch Adventist and very, very serious. So this one. <laughs> They we were practicing. This time we moved from 72 Lincoln Place, eh? and that 72 Lincoln Place is in Crown Heights, where right? around Eastern Parkway. And my mother-in-law, Melanie McLeod, bought a building at 297 East 91st Street, and the whole like the whole Caracol crowd moved there, and that was and still is one of the Caracol cultural centers in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we were practicing there one evening and sure enough who showed up is Winston. Mm -hmm. But as they say in the real readers stood in my shoes because he's that, I, I don't think that was his name. But um he joined us then and he took the big jump to a slightly different level because you see I always referred to him as a professional student. I think Fleury knew every click in the academic world. Hmm. And we had some contacts and Big John became not just Carol, who knew, but you could say he became international because we performed in this university, that university and so on and so forth. And one of my biggest regrets to date is that there was a young, a budding Jamaican journalist and the guy used to plague me to do a documentary of Carol for Big Drum. But we weren't savvy enough to do it. So we missed a golden opportunity there. Yes. Wherever I play. But Big Drum will take us now to the Museum of Natural History in Manhattan. And it was such a hit for them because Again, Karaku Big Drum and the style of drumming and everything else that was a big, was, was a new phenomenon. It's not something that people used to, so we were a big hit then. We, we had sent a stage every time we performed at the Museum of Natural History. So, there was one Sunday that we were asked to perform at the Museum of Natural History in Manhattan, across Central Park on 80th, 80th Street, not too far from the Dakota where John Lennon was ah. shot, killed him. A few blocks from there. And we wanted to perform. Back in the days, we had people like Starita, Moses Homo, she's here in Caracol now. Okay. Neil John Bishop, Marlin Bido, uh, Monica, Bristol, her sister. And I mean, the, the other, the two, two, two new Muslims, my sister was in it, my children wasn't around yet. Mm -hmm. And we went to perform at the Museum of Natural History. And Nell, John, performed a Kori Kori hmm. to the rhythm of drumming by Dennis Joseph, who incidentally, I would say, is the best of all the young players. And he, he could well, I mean, he's not a sugar or a, 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 a Haynes Lambert, mm -hmm. but he wasn't too far behind. Kukuri really made those drums talk. 
<laughs> and when Neil performed, <laughs> we got out the Blanco. Wow. Uh, it's, it's that innovation yes. that yes, you know. Okay. So when we, it's all, when you think the dust clear, I saw this little old white man come up to me and he said good day and so on and so forth. And he introduced himself as Pete Seeger. But only you don't even know who Pete Seeger is. No, Pete Seeger is a premier folklorist. Mm -hmm. The guy has a lot of weight and you know, in the days of Bob Dylan and Joan Baez and all those um, sort of a, <laughs> those revolutionary people, he was a big name. That Pete Seeger was responsible for suing DuPont Chemical Company Ooh. because they were dumping chemicals in the Hudson River. Uh, yeah, and not only that, sewage too. I'll tell you something about the sewage just now. So he sued and won DuPont, so he cleaned it up. But the guy came, played the banjo, and he sing all those kind of songs like um, All My Trials and Where All The Flowers Gone and Blowing In The Wind, those type of songs, you know. And he asked us, he said he's, he was well pleased with the performance. Mm -hmm. And if we would like to um, open up for him for his next show at Brooklyn Academy of Music. Mm -hmm. Was the biggest thing for us. Mm -hmm. The best pay that we ever had. Mm -hmm. So we went to the Brooklyn Academy of Music. And again, the reception was quite good. So as a result of that, the next step for the next promotion, we get Restoration Plaza on Fulton Street. Hired us to perform live and in color for Muhammad Ali. Oh, great Muhammad Ali. Wow. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, and but if we were savvy enough, Karaku, Big John would have been a big thing to contend with now. While all this was happening, we decided to take Big John to England. Mm -hmm. And um, we went to England, and every day I remember. These two gentlemen, the late Christopher Quashi, mm -hmm. I think he died last, eh? yeah. and the late Bertie Alexander. Mm -hmm. Those guys organized the tour for us, and everything was on okay. point. On point. Our first performance was at the Mr. Wallace in Lucia. Mm -hmm. We performed there. And, uh, so the rain around us a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and later, yeah, of course. Right. So we were talking about England now. Mm -hmm. You're traveling to England. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I tell you, our first performance at Louis Sherman in the Southeast. Because I met a little crowd, but not anything to write them about. But the following weekend, mm -hmm. we moved to Yorkshire. And you know, Yorkshire is little Caribbean. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> we did a performance there. Not only was the big drum, as authentic as you'll get it, because we had all the dancers and the songs and good drumming. But in addition to that, we invited uh, an American dance group with us. And the lead drummer and, and that group is somebody I can remember is Khaled Ghana. Now Khaled Ghana was one of the guys who played Gumbe in the Lion King. Okay. So <laughs> So that's the quality of drumming yeah. the guy is with. Yeah. Uh, he, this guy would make the drum talk. Yes, yes. And not only was big drum good, but those American, I think there's, there's a, the, the, coordinate, the co uh, coordinate of that American group was a, a, a young lady called Brenda. I don't remember what her surname was. Right. But she came there with a group and invited some of the characters to, and, and, and taught them some of the moves and so on. It was a, a sellout. And we had gone there to do a performance on Saturday evening. And there was an immediate request for an uncle for the following day. Mm. So we performed again the following day nice. in England. Nice. So, yeah, we were responsible for taking Big John not only to America, but, but to England. England. Yeah. And um, <laughs> sometimes people don't know. And you don't want to tell them because they figure <laughs> you, you're trying to know. Say, say something for yourself. Yeah, but that's all, that, but no. no, that's that's all, that's all how it all begun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, people who are responsible for taking a, a, a big jump to America, you say it's people like myself, Leon, Carla Elbido, mm -hmm. Cyril Anthony Sylvester, okay. Roger Gay, and we started in 73. We sent him a born in 76, ah. years later. 
And um, what happened then? Winston was so, so much in love, I must say, with the whole big jump experience yeah. that he gave it his all. Yes. And there came a time, uh, Rina, mm -hmm. when uh, I thought I was being taxed too much because, you know, our people, <laughs> sometimes we don't realize what we have. Mm -hmm. And it became a, a job in itself to get you to go and practice and so on and so on. Oh God, we get inside that tool yes, and that kind of foolishness. Yes. Don't uh -huh. realize what culture means. It's never old. Culture is never old. No. So uh, I sort of gave up on it somewhat. And when mm -hmm. some took the torch and, and mm -hmm. took it to a different level. Mm -hmm. And with, 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 with a different enthusiasm. But I must tell you though, <laughs> in as much as <laughs> sometimes with all that he's done for Big John, not everything he could take what Winston said. I think it would have been assault sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, that's, that's been my experience. But, but as he yes. said, as he quite rightly said to me sometimes, Leo, white people lie for us, enough in order to lie for them. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, and, and, and he did well, and as a matter of fact, but he was a sort of an envoy for the Big Job or Big Job in, in America. Whenever we have something to do, mm -hmm. Um, he'll be the messenger. So we, we're sitting here and we're looking at Sandy Island, right? Yeah. And I know a song, a big jump song, something with Sandy Island uh -huh. and Sarah. So is that an authentic thing or something from Winston? No, that's Winston composition. <laughs> <laughs> Winston composition. You know, because... Remind me how it goes. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you just a you know, You know what's a cheer up? Uh. A cheer up is your opening song, is a, is a breakaway. Right. Uh, is, 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 is planting and blubber in a sense, but um, Karakuo, Winston, come on, the Karakuo, my Sotio, I love my Dewey Sandy Island, Sarah, can you cut it? I said, What are you saying? Sandy Island, and who is Sarah you talking about? You know, Sarah for that gate, man. <laughs> Winston said, Yes, that's how it comes. So everybody's saying Sarah, can you? No, no, no. Yeah, you won't think. <laughs> that's with some composition. So, <laughs> and but you know, I I I, I like with in the sense that um, life for us enough. Yeah, when some take some chances. I tell you once, I asked Winston, I said, okay. I said, um, Winston, what do you think? I was thinking about Carol. See, boy, Carol, we making no progress. Why do you think it's because of that? He said, my brother, our prince and princess. I walk in the streets and jackasses are saddling horses, you know. <laughs> so, and that's it, man? Yeah. So I, we had this, we had this um, yes, he was yes, great yes. With, mm. with words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He took the big jump to a different level, but he's uh, definitely, you know, all this, the, the, the folks you see coming to America mm -hmm. for big jump mm -hmm. from Sugar Adams. Mm -hmm. Man who does it, but he didn't come for, for Big Jump, he came for Quadrille. Sonel Allard, uh, Alvin Ditt, Enel, is my doing. Oh, really? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm hearing a different one <laughs> to this now. Yeah, we are winning some of the profession. Ah! Uh, I tell you what, okay. <laughs> yes, everything was financed by me. <laughs> so, but uh -huh. of course, if you said Winston down here, you don't say, oh, come here, take the glory. That's how it is. But I didn't mind because he produced them. Yeah? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 yes. So yes. You saw it for Caracol. Yes, something for, happened absolutely, for Caracol, absolutely. And it absolutely. wasn't about you. Mm -hmm. It was never that about was, you. Uh, uh, it's about Caracol. So it's about Caracol. We, we went from to the sacrifice. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, so uh -huh. we took those things well. Very... So what? He was in America with you all and you all sent him down for the people or something like that? Yes. Uh -huh. I'll give you two instances. We sent him down sometime. Even it was his idea. Okay. Where from. Okay. Said we shouldn't only keep doing the big drum in New York, mm -hmm. but big drum is dying out in Carrico. So we must sort of revive it here. We sent him down and he had this big to do mm -hmm. in junior sec. 
<laughs> with Mr. Blaze and Hafa Kiara, who have pictures of it at home. Okay. Yeah. So that was one thing we did. We encouraged and we started what is now the same karaoke, okay, a big drum karaoke, you know, with the Estonian people like that, that was all doing art. So. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so really, uh, so. <laughs> so people like Lucy and Duncan and so Lucy and Duncan them. came later. Ah. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. She, um, well, as everything else, the old lady has gone out and then Lucian was the surviving senior person there. Right. And probably at, at the time was the person, the female, elder female with the best knowledge of Big Drum. Okay. And she took over and became the queen. Okay. But back in the day... Uh -huh. Because Daniel Akins, Prince Lawrence and... Daniel Akin, Prince Lawrence, Caddy Lazarus. Uh -huh. uh, this one, um, oh God, is uh, Ferdinand Lawrence. All those guys, they were all big drum players. The one thing about Sugar Adams, even though Sugar Adams is without a doubt the best lead drum player in karaoke, because if you understand the drumming and the patterns, mm. see nowadays when you have people play big drum, it's not so. There is there is. A, a method to the madness, yes, yes, you know, and yes, if yes. when you listen to people like Sugar, he explained to you how it is done. I remember when Sugar came to, to, to New York, and again, the of the, oh, the, Olina, Olina, that is, I think, I think, um, might be Sugar's daughter, you know. Who's daughter? Sugar Adams. Ah. Or something so. Ah. So she is ready to, Demi and CD and Matthias and all those people like that. Mm -hmm. And through Cyril, Cyril Sylvester, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's his relatives. Okay. So he, that's how we were able to get Sugar to come into America. But when Sugar came to America, Sugar was already too feeble to play. Oh. But we thought we were planning again another big drum expose. And even though his presence at the venue yes. will mean a lot. Yes. Because when we, when we advertise that big drum, show mm -hmm. in what we call um not president chateau but um give me a minute i'll tell you just now uh mm -mm. I'll, I'll get it just now anyway we had a show there and was standing room only you can get people to come in because that time we had sugar dancing big drum mm. um uncle manu dancing quadrille and he played the violin let's mm -hmm. chat president not president chateau no president chateau was on on on, on, on president and utica mm -hmm. i'll get it just now <laughs> what? So uh, the place was just filled to capacity and Big Jam was flourishing. Was it around that time Winston grabbed his skirt and started to dance? I heard of Winston Fleury dancing in America and he grabbed a skirt. Well, that, <laughs> that, was, that was the norm. But uh, we had a bit of a friction when he we went to England uh -huh. because I said to Winston, I know, come on, let's get serious. <laughs> we are doing. Big jump. We even added limbo uh -huh. to the big jump just to sort of a change the monotony. You know, because if you're not into big jump too much, sometimes and big limbo is a, is a big thing for people who visit the Caribbean and so on. Mm -hmm. So we brought in some limbo into the thing, and Winston in Oscar better sport. And Winston is the first person, even though he's able to grab a skirt and, and so I said to him, when we go to England, we're not limboing. We play big jump and leave the skirt alone. Because we had enough ladies. <laughs> hey, hey. Shame on you, man. In Huddersfield that day, man, and I tell you, Poco was hot, you know. Uh -huh. When the drum take wins, and you later for you, wins, and take the skirt. <laughs> he grab his skirt. He just grab his skirt and he puts it on the full and then, and watch the drum. He's why he had Oh my it. god. Oh, you okay. <laughs> But, yeah, but Winston, that. that was the Winston for you. Yeah, that was the Winston. Listen, when, I travel, when we traveled to America, we were looking at a documentary with you. I think that was in the 90s. And I saw even your kids dancing as well. So not only did you keep it for yourself, you passed it on to them. Yep. Tell us about that performance. You introduced that stage. and I mean, you would do everybody was doing the thing. Yes, so, gentlemen, it is on that note that I give you the Karaku big drum dancers with Leo Joseph as their commentator. <laughs> no, because we were, I tell you, we had good big drum, drum. Uh -huh. And so the girls, the girls, my daughters, right. they learned from the very best because they learned from the I'll tell you what, um, this is Monica Bixler talking about Marlene Bidou. 
uh -huh. Storyteller Moses, mm -hmm. Mary John, and mm -hmm. um, you have people like Young Kala, Bido, as uh -huh. Marlene and Kala's daughter. Okay. My two daughters, um, Jamel and Natasha, Vonny, Vonita Moses, as you know, the whole family, and you had a lot of young people dancing. Yeah. So, and 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 they were into it. They were yes. into the culture. Yes. Yes. So, so they were performing. So when you when when we go to perform, mm -hmm. because I didn't only listen to people like Sugar, I read up on the, on the culture too. Okay. So I could narrate and explain what we're doing now and what's happening next, mm -hmm. and the significance and purpose of all the dances. I'm about to present to you what we think might be the most authentic form of African drumming found in the Caribbean. What we will share tonight, ladies and gentlemen, will do the song called Ina O, which stems from the Kromanti Nation. We'll do something called Dama from the Igbo. And we'll do another dance called the Halekod, which is a hen dance. I think that was very, very important because <laughs> you're educating people yeah. about the big German itself, what's happening, what's going to take place next, the reason why you mm -hmm. did that. I think that was really, really good. And maybe that's something we should consider doing. Yeah, because I tell you one thing, you know, again, going back to sugar, when sugar came to America, and we were practicing that particular day, 1096 Winthrop Street, mm -hmm. at the basement of my late aunt in law, Swabina John. That's Mel's mother, Mel's a, a peacock, I tell you, because hmm. she, she grew up with people like um, uh, Glassin and, and then the, the, his, his relatives. Yeah, that's his relatives. Glassin and Sia. You know Glassin and Sia? <laughs> yeah, man, and Glassin, out, outside list, eh? mm -hmm. Glassin was the best quadrille man in Karaku. Ah. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> we were practicing there, and Sugar was, that occasion was for, Sugar was going to be the guest of honor there. Yeah. And so he came down, they brought him down to hear how the drumming was going. And we played up <laughs> where we started off with the Comanti. Mm -hmm. Comanti is where you went the ring and you bless the ring and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. We played a chair up. Chair up is as mm -hmm. if everybody could dance yes. up. Then you come, you know, you want to dance a Harley Cod. Mm -hmm. It's a different kettle of fish. You want to dance a Bella Cowboy, it's a different kettle mm -hmm. of fish. <laughs> you want to dance Ibo. You want to dance then. We get into the manding, mm -hmm. and um, we were drumming, and she was saying, ah. that's not how we go. Uh -huh. And he tried his best to explain to us okay. the beat for the manding. And every time he explained and he listened to Sugar Shake, he had, mm -mm. Right, mm -mm. So <laughs> at one time, in frustration, Sugar said, pass the damn drum for me out. So, and it's a full of for me. That means you give him the rhythm mm -hmm. and he's going to play his patterns based on the rhythm that you give him. Mm -hmm. And when he, when he played what he thought was good enough as a rhythm, mm -hmm. he attempted to play the lead part in the manding. Mm -hmm. And Sugar tried to raise his hand and he I'm oh. telling you, Sugar just sat there and cried tears, yes. tears, tears. Like, and he him say, what you mean a man as me sugar can play drum? Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Or oh, he, he saw something that <laughs> and I think when he left he was That's he wasn't painful. still wasn't satisfied with no. we our manding production and he couldn't do anything to help us. Mm. So I, I, <laughs> people a lot of us don't understand the cultural connection with the islands of the Caribbean, Haiti included. Mm -hmm. A lot of Caribbean is in Haiti. You know? Yes. Because there is the one song that Sugar sings all the time. Mm -hmm. Play me, play with Molly, play with my wazo. And the mash that is Sunday, mm -hmm. the boat is leaving for Haiti. That's when they used to divide the families. Okay. So if, in order that you don't become too powerful and give anybody any problems, mm -hmm. if you have the, the, the wealth families or, or, or for, the, for the Mills family, mm -hmm. you send one of your brothers in Trinidad and another one in Haiti. Mm. So they, they divide they the family to witness. Uh, that's what you see. <laughs> and and, and, and that, that kind of a foolishness relieved ah. itself. Because you see ah. why Karaku is where it is now is because we're divided. Uh -huh. Don't you know? Anytime you're divided, you, you get weak. Yes, yes. United yes, we yes. stand divided with all this common uh, sense. Of course. So of course, of this course. thing that was implemented, that's today, yeah? 
today that Karaku is so divided and we want to fight each other about nothing. Hmm. Yeah. That is that is our detriment. Yeah. Yeah, man. So <laughs> hmm. I'm, I'm telling you, I would want to relieve the days again when Karaku was Karaku and you used to go out and hear all those good things and, 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 and so on and so forth. And if I, I could recall, I'd like to make mention mm -hmm. of some of the old mm -hmm. legends in Karaku. Mm -hmm. Well, you hear me saying just now, Sugar, mm -hmm. the best drummer, but he didn't have a permanent team per se. Okay. So sometimes you see Pofella, next mm -hmm. time you see Prince Lawrence, mm -hmm. and next time you see Fedna, or you see Caddy. All these folks are people who really made, well, who kept big drum in Caribou, to what it is. Another one is Finderson Lawrence. It's in the Lawrence, yes, yes. Good, and um, he was a guy who, who did, um, he was a, a road driver. driver. Yeah, he lived in Mondo Hollow. Okay. Excellent. Uh -huh. So, all these guys and these people, when they come out to play big drum, you hear what was authentic big drum? Mm -hmm. And that cut drum, I never understood the, the relevance of that. When the guys tune their drums, you'll have to have a piece of thread go across the surface of the drum, and onto that, they tie some common pins. So when you touch the drum, you don't only hear a ringing sound, but there's a snare sound to it. Uh, eh? But when you hear those drums, man, you, you, like <laughs> my body used to say, sick, lame, or lazy, deaf democracy, you have to dance. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. drum was that good. And, and sometimes I wish I could hear some semblance of that again, but it's not there. What about Union Island? I know there was play some good drums. Union Island, um, and there was another lady, I can't remember her name. Mm -hmm. She was a group in, in New York. Mm -hmm. um, wherever big drum playing, she did, mm -hmm. even though she was from Union Island. Okay. And she repatriated, she came back home to Union Island sometime and revived the big drum. I, I ah, can't remember her name. And okay. I was quite pleased mm -hmm. with what I heard in terms of drumming. Yes. But you know, they've added a, a little pinch of it because it's not the regular, the first right. drum, second drum, right. and, and fuller. Yes. They have boombies and all this kind of thing. But mm -hmm. people drum and dance with passion. Because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you can hear big drum playing and you stand up one place. Yeah. You have to be possessed. Yeah. You have to be possessed, yeah, but man. the drumming have to be good too. Okay. So, all those, <laughs> all those good times and good days, we're missing it. Yeah. And um, so people like Leftis and Neil and them that are in, in culture now. I mean, the thing about it, we have to get somebody with experience, somebody like you, to pass it on to them, so they could pass it on to the younger ones. Are we coming to you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think this is where we'll wrap up. I mean, the rain again. Yes. So, okay. Mr. Joseph. Yes. I mean, you're traveling soon. There is a big thing taking place in New York. We will talk about it now on Saturday. But when you come back, we're going to continue. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank Goodbye. you very much for Thank viewing you. and see you. Bye. Bye, -bye. in New York. Everybody in Karaku in New York, Saturday, please come. Woohoo! You're going to hear about it. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs>